So going into 2021, the Oklahoma Sooners are going to be probably fan favorites to a lot of teams, even even to people that don't even really support the University of Oklahoma. I can almost guarantee you that Oklahoma is going to be a fan favorite, right? They've kind of become this golden child in a way of a team that not only uh, could be a representative for the Big 12 and, and get back to the college football playoffs, but even competing for a national championship against Alabama, Clemson's, uh, the Ohio State, the LSU, you know, who knows, those type of schools in the world, right? Oklahoma has, has really always had this bad reputation of a team that's there. They're an elite program, but when they get to, when it comes to facing elite competition, that's kind of when they've always faltered. I mean, if you look at Oklahoma's, even look at the last decade, I mean, they've won like, what, six straight, six or seven straight Big 12 championships. Uh, they've dominated pretty much every one of the Big 12 that they face. They've produced, you know, two Heisman Trophy winners, Almost another Heisman Trophy winner in Jalen Hurts. Um, countless NFL draft picks. Uh, countless amount of young coaching prospects. I mean, Oklahoma is an elite program, but when it comes to getting there over the hump against the elite teams, they always kind of falter. Um, so obviously in 2020 was a big, big year for the Oklahoma Sooners as far as not with the wins, not with the win projections because they didn't make it to the college football playoffs. Matter of fact, they they were off to a one and two start by losing to Kansas State and, and Iowa State. But however, they made huge strides and improvements when it came to their defense, right? They went from uh, 32nd, I'm just going to give, uh, give you guys an example. They went from 32nd in pass rush to ninth in pass rush efficiency. They were top 10 in sacks. They were top 10 in, they were top three actually in, in interceptions. They were almost top 10 in almost every single statistical uh, team category, including rushing yards, passing yards allowed. Um, they, you know, quarterback, you know, quarterback efficiency on defense. I mean, they were elite. That was an elite defense. And, you know, a lot of us kind of give Oklahoma that bad reputation because they've always, you know, put out bad defenses. But let's give credit to Alex Grinch. He's done a phenomenal job, especially the improvement. I mean, first of all, when he got there, he had the worst defense possibly in big, in one of the worst defenses in all time, in all time, I'm sorry, of all time that he inherited in 2018, transformed that into a pretty decent defense and then transformed it into an elite uh, type of defensive unit. Now, they are losing guys like Ronnie Perkins, uh, Trey Norwood, Trey Brown. Uh, they're also losing Creed Humphrey, and I'm just talking about from the offensive side of the ball, and then obviously, you know, uh, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Those are big losses that the Oklahoma Sooners are losing, especially that those names are just missing the defensive, defensive side of the ball. Losing your leader in Ronnie Perkins, that's a big loss. However, Oklahoma's, you know, they're getting back a lot of defensive talent. Uh, offensively, they're Oklahoma, so they're always going to continue. To, so they're going to find ways to con to continue to rebound. Lincoln Riley is going to find a way for this offense to continue to be good. Uh, but going into the spring of twenty, uh, you know, going into spring into also going into fall camp for twenty twenty one, you know, just taking a look at some of the impactful players, right? You look at the offensive side of the ball, uh, the quarterback Spencer Rattler. You got your quarterback right there. You also bring in a five star in Caleb Williams, who's number one dual threat and the number one quarterback in the country. That's again, you know, Oklahoma's they're they're known for for being this factor when it comes to producing first round talent. You know, the train that Lincoln Riley continues uh, to have. Uh, you know, it's going to continue to roll on. So uh, that's that's really, really huge there. You look at the running back position. Yes, you lose Ramondre Stevenson, but you return back Kennedy Brooks, who was supposed to was the projected starter for uh, the running back, you know, before Ramondre took off and became big. So getting a guy that had a thousand yards in Kennedy Brooks, a guy that has a lot of experience, that is really, really good. Again, he opted out because of COVID. He was expected to go to the NFL draft, but he decided to return. And uh, now Kennedy Brooks is, you know, he you know looks like he's going to get back on his mantle there. The offensive line is going to be interesting there. They're going to be really, really good. I mean, you know, you get a transfer in Wanya Morris. I mean, this is a true five-star athlete, a true five-star kid that went that was uh, that went to the University of Tennessee. Of course, you know, Tennessee was a train wreck. He decided to transfer out. He's going to go to Oklahoma where he's going to try to improve on his tools. That's a big, big. That's a big, big one for the University of Oklahoma. You can immediately kick, kick out, uh, le, you know, a Wanya Morris left tackle. And I think uh, their their previous left tackle. I think his name was Harrison. Again, you guys can kind of correct me in the comic section. Again, I'm not reading his script or anything like that. This is literally raw footage. So I think his name was Harrison. I think they're going to kick him out to right tackle. Antoine Harrison. I think they're going to kick him out to right tackle. I know he's very, very athletic, very, very big type of guy. There were some instances where. Uh, there was some talk where he was supposed to be kicked inside, but again, he was really, really good there. So they're going to kick him out to right tackle. Uh, you also have your, you know, you, you also have this kid, the center. Uh, I think his name is Chris. I know his first name is Chris. I'm not 
entirely sure what his last name is, but the kid from UCLA, he's going to be back there as well. Now, they have, a, they have another one. They have a backup center uh, who was known as being the big athletic one, the version. It's just that the guy from UCLA, he's very, very experienced. So very interesting to see what that, that battle is there. You return back your left guard as well, and I think they also return back their right guard as well. So Oklahoma's going to – again, this is an experienced offensive line. Uh, Oklahoma should be very, very good in that category. Look at the receivers. Uh, you look at guys – uh, look at guys like, um, uh, what's his name, Theo Weiss. You look at guys like Theo Weiss. You look at guys like Jaden Hazelwood, who I think is going to be kicked out to being an X receiver. I think he was the Z receiver last year, so he's going to be a former five-star recruit. He's going to be kicked into the uh, to the X. Again, I just mentioned Theo Weiss. He's a pretty big, impactful player. Marvin Mims is that dude, man. Marvin Mims had a big year for the University of Oklahoma as becoming the number one receiver. You now have him returning back as well. You also get Mario Williams for uh, – from Plant, you know, from Florida, uh, he came from Plant High School. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how big of a factor he can play. Uh, you know, typically Oklahoma is very, very good when it comes to producing not just you know good, really, you know really, really good receivers and putting them out to the NFL, but also developing freshmen on the spot. So Mario Williams is a guy to definitely look out for. You also got Austin Stone, your tight end back as well. Uh, Oklahoma should be very, very good at the receiving good position. Again, there's a lot of names I probably didn't even mention anyway. Uh, they're very, very talented at those receiver spots. So definitely look out for that. Um, so offensively, they're loaded as usual. But then you look at the defensive side of the ball, right? You look at guys like Marcus Stripling, uh, Marcus Stripling, uh, Jalen Redmond. Uh, who's that cornerback? Uh Nick Benito, you look at Nick Benito. Uh, again, I, that, that just came back to me. But you look at guys like uh, like Nick Benito, and and and, and you look at guys like uh, PJ PJ Washington, their cornerback. Uh, Oklahoma is going to be absolutely loaded. Again, there's a lot of names that I didn't I didn't even mentioned. Uh, you know, Oklahoma is extremely good. You look at the nose guard. You look at you know, you take a look at their nose guard. He's going to be returning back as well. He was very very impactful. Again, Oklahoma fans, let me know in the comment section these names that I'm forgetting. But the the point is that Oklahoma is extremely loaded in those in those defensive positions, especially in the front side. Nick Benito was a big impactful player for them with Ronnie Perkins. Uh, so the fact that you you return him back is really really good. So Oklahoma is absolutely loaded going into the 2020 20, uh, 2021 fall season. Uh, again, I'm very interested to see what this team looks like in spring. Um, you know, I'm very interested to see what they look like in spring because, again, how good they, they look phenomenal, phenomenally well uh, when it came to their defense. And then you take a look at what they did on the offensive side of the ball with the, with the production. I mean, if you combine those two forces kind of together, Oklahoma is a national championship caliber team. And they were a national championship caliber team, you know, after their after their their back to back losses to Kansas State and to Iowa State. So, you know, and then you take a look at the competition that the Big 12 has already have to that they that they're gonna have to face when it came when it comes to Big Twelve competition, Iowa State is strong. Iowa State is always gonna be a strong team, but let's be honest, they don't have the talent that Oklahoma has. They might beat them once in the regular season. They're always gonna challenge them, but we all know when it comes to those Big Twelve title games, Oklahoma is always ready. They're always prepared, and they're more seasoned and more experienced when it came to the offseason. When it, when it comes uh, more specifically closer to the offseason edition, so Oklahoma, man, I, I think they're just gonna be too you know too strong, too fast, too physical. If they do rematch Iowa State in the Big 12 championship, Texas is the only team that can beat them when it comes to talent. They can beat they they, they can beat them when it comes to head on head, and then obviously talent and you know talent and productivity. Texas is probably the only team that can match Oklahoma. But Oklahoma has had Texas number right. We've we, they've had some classic games. Texas has had, has had uh, you know you know they they beat Oklahoma a couple of times. But when it comes to the most important moments, the most important games. Oklahoma always has the edge up. They have superior coaching and you know superior talent and superior productivity on the field. Uh, TCU, I think they'll be a little bit better. Uh, Nebraska is trying to cancel out, so I don't know what's going on with uh, I, I don't know what's going on with ne that Nebraska game. You know, Kansas State they beat Oklahoma last year, so it'll be very interesting to see what Kansas State can do. Uh, you know, the Big Twelve is always tough. Oklahoma State is always really, really, you know, is always really a, a, a pretty good competitor. Uh, Baylor, it'd be very interesting to see what they can do. 
under the regime of Dave Aranda. You know, I, I just, I really don't, I mean, I think it's going to be competitive. The Big 12 is always very, very competitive, but I don't see anyone, get, I, don't, I don't see anybody dethroning Oklahoma from that crowd. Even if Oklahoma has a loss, I think Oklahoma is good enough to get to the Big 12, not only win the Big 12, but they're good enough to get into the college football playoffs. I think that they're, what we saw from them on the defensive side of the ball and what we saw from the, on, on the offensive side of the ball, I think that will translate to the 2021 season. And I think that this team will only, go, will only uh, get better. In those particular areas. Also, what's going on with Buki Hiles? I don't, I don't know what's going on with Bradley Hiles there. You know, is he is he in the transfer portal? Is he out of it? I don't know what's going on with him. So, Oklahoma fans, let me Oklahoma fans, please let me know in the comment section what you guys think about him and if you know is he going to stay or is he going to go? I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, the Oklahoma Sooners are absolutely loaded going into the 2021 season. They're definitely going to be favorites not only to get to the you know to, uh, win the Big 12, but to definitely get to the College Football Playoffs again. I don't know how they're going to perform against the elite of the elite teams. That's that's one area that they've struggled in. It's, it's one thing if you're dominating your conference. It's another thing once you actually get to those big games. So I'm very interested to see if they can do that, if they can get past the Big 12 again, and if they can you know go against those elite teams in the college football playoffs. Will the dominance that we saw from the defense from them on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball is that you know are we gonna is that gonna transition into wins against those those high caliber big time teams? We'll find out. So, but I'm very, very excited to see what the Oklahoma Sooners will be doing for the 2021 season.